Good evening, friends, and welcome to another stream. Uh, in this one, we're going to do some more Rust programming, uh, still contributing to an open source project, and that open source project still being Git UI. Um, I just, um, I really like this project. I really wanted to get as far as possible. So that's where I'm um, really focusing my limited efforts at this uh, point in time. And um, what are, or rather, um, I don't have too much time to spend on programming and streaming these days. So the little, the little time I have, I really appreciate being able to, um, to do this. So yeah, uh, let's see. So here we are, Git UI. It's a terminal client for Git. It's written in Rust. And uh, I'm trying to make it my daily driver instead of uh, Fork. And Fork is a UI, Git UI for, um, or rather, <laughs> a, a GUI client for Git, which is this one over here, which I've been using for about a year. And uh, I don't know. I really like this project, uh, and would and the, some of the reason for this project to be a thing at all is because Fork went uh, for pay um, for, for a paid, paid license a little while, a little while back, and uh, Stefan, the maintainer of this, created this um, project to. Uh, uh, it, it seems it, at least to him as a um, replacement for Fork. Anyway. Let's get to the code, or rather, what we what we will we'll be working on. So, uh, Alex Popov has suggested that you should be able to open uh, an editor to edit a file when you're watching the uh, looking at the diff of a file. And uh, Stefan thinks that's a good idea. And what's also nice is that he's suggesting that because of Tig, which is another client, that um, another terminal client for git uh, enables this and the nice thing is i just my previous contribution to git ui was actually launching an external editor based on this variable and others you can also set visual or git editor and it will respect those two um so most of this this plumbing is already implemented so what we are the only thing we need to implement to make this work is set up the shortcut uh, Alex Popov suggests using E as in TIG and I don't see why not uh, and the other thing that we need to figure out is where to um, at the bottom of the GUI of the, the UI there is our the commands that are available are shown and we need to figure out where to put this command specifically because some of these commands are supplied by the different widgets that are shown, or rather components that are shown on screen at any time. And we need to find the right component to uh, to surface this command. I'm kind of leaning towards the one that floats up this diff command, maybe. It seems like that's the right one, because when you switch between the unstaged changes and the staged changes, the diff command stays present. So it seems like that's a logical place to put it, but we'll ha we'll have a look around and see what we figure out. So let's see. Let's jump into some code. I haven't prepared too much before this. Um, the only thing that I've basically done is I've double checked that there are no other th things bound to E. The only other thing that uses E is this one, uh, and this is the command to open the external editor when you're committing. So open commit editor right here, uh, and this uh, and that uses control e, uh, and I think we're just going to use a plain e for opening the editor when wanting to edit a file. So if I understand this um, request correctly, when you're watching diffs, you sometimes want to edit the file just a bit, and for that tig there is an e uh, key to open so the uh, file in the editor would be super cool to have some functionality here as well. So what I'm seeing this is this as is. Um, we should be able to um, when looking at the diffs which I 
which I uh, interpret as being looking at the files here, you should be able to just hit E. So to give an example of what that looks like, let's just make a change here, like so. That should show up here any second now. There we go. So when you're looking at files here, we should be able to just hit E, and that will launch the external editor and maybe uh, enable you to edit, for example, keys.rs, like um, right here. So, uh, what to do first? We could, yeah, let's just set up this um, this binding first. Uh, we're here anyways, so let's just do that. Uh, let's see, is there any stash instance to be grouped? Command. I'm just trying to figure out if there is any, like, sort of, Okay. So let's see diff. Diff reset. Okay, that's the only one mentioning. Uh, let's see left. Focus left. Focus right. Right, so that only binds right, 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 right. Left and right, I guess. Mm hmm. Well, there was this other reference, reset hunk. Yeah, so that's specifically for resetting a hunk of the... Which uses the same as reset file. That's interesting. Oh, it's good design, I would suggest. Same shortcut for both, but... Uh... But I think I'm gonna... Oh, this is ignore file. <clears throat> hmm. So I think I'm just gonna put it right here actually. Uh, let's see. Oh. Oops, no, that's not the one. There we go. Edit file. The event okay. and that's going to be a uh, no mod, yeah. Key code, uh, it's a character, and it's going to be e, like so. Okay, so now the next step is figure out where this diff is surfaced in the code. So my first thought is right here. This is the text for the command. And we need to, uh, to set this. So I'm thinking diff focus left, diff focus right. Ignore item, reset, and stage, stage, stage all, stage item. In this file, I put the, and where do you go here? Right about, right above stage file. Should I maybe do the same here? Uh, let's see. Oh, it's called stage item, right? Stage amend. Hmm. Commit enter stage all. Yeah, I think we'll just put it in here, actually. Pub static. Um, should I call it edit item? I feel like edit file is more correct, but they call it item in here. Here it's called status stage file. Here it's called stage item. I will call it edit item. Uh, command text. Do we still have to be this explicit with uh, statics in Rust? Can't remember. 
Uh, let's see. You see, this I can't call it edit item in here. That just seems weird. Edit file. E. Edit the currently selected file in an external editor. Yeah. Group. Command group changes. And stage. And stage are both in the command group changes. Where are these command groups defined? Oh, right, this is for the help text. So whenever you're in Git UI and you put, um, push H, you get this, uh, this help uh, view with all the commands that are available. So diff staging commit general. So this should be in changes, right? That feels most, the most right. Still feels so weird. I call it item. Hmm. I guess it's the. Oh, sorry, that's not what I meant to do. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, it's all wrong. Here we go. <laughs> uh, let's see. Can I do this maybe? Yeah, here we go. Nope, no, that's not what I want. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, let's just see the next occurrence of this. Oh, no, wait. Hmm. Uh, edit. Open, no, not this one. Yeah. You know what, I'm gonna call it item and after all. Edit the currently selected file in an external editor. Uh, let's see. Open commit editor, available in non-empty stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just call commit editor up there. In an external editor. Do I have to specify that it's, that it's external? Or is that a bit weird? I'll leave it in. Okay, command group changes. Yep. With a drilling comma. Okay, so now we got the command text. Uh, do we need to put anything in here? I don't think so. Uh, let's leave that as is. The next thing we need to figure out, though, is the diff thing. So, uh, do 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 do. Diff focus right. So I'm guessing this is the text for this action specifically over here. And we need basically to be the same place that that, that is, which is here. Inspect commit. Well, that seems logical, I guess. So it says you specify the text and when it's supposed to be enabled and when it's available. Okay, so right now this is grayed out because it's not available. But if I go down to one, uh, didn't I focus here? Uh oh, what did I do? Hmm. Well, that works. Whoops. Oh, okay. I know what's. I know what's up. Uh, crap. Do this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so now it's available. Now it's not grayed out anymore. Okay. So it should always be available. 
Wait, wait a second. So this is available when diff is focused and this when it's not, not focused and this when it is focused. Um, and I'm thinking we should put this after ignore but before diff. So basically here. So let's do push and we are going to do copy this actually. Command info new and this is where the text goes. That's not the right one. These can just be together like so. This is um, edit edit item. When is it enabled? Um, Hmm. Well, it's basically whenever something is. Hmm. Actually, it's the same can focus diff. Yeah. So we can just reuse that. Can focus diff. That's nice. When is it available? <clears throat> basically. No. Okay. It's it's uh, it's when self diff dot focused. Well. It's basically always available though. Because even if you're in the right pane over here, you're still basic you should st still be, be able to edit the file, I think. Or is that weird? The only hmm, the only annoying thing is we won't be able to jump to this specific location in the file when doing that. Because I don't think we can, we can't assume that all the different editors have a standardized way of specifying where in the file it should jump to when it opens the file. I don't think that there's any standardized way of doing that. So we are not that lucky. I guess uh, poor soul should be in here too. Just like the other ones. Okay. So this puts the command in, I think. And we have the text to go along with it. Now we just need to handle it. So that's down here, I think. self dot hide. Ooh, that's interesting. What is exit pop up? Escape. So whenever you press escape while being inside the inspect commit. Okay, this needs to be checked out. So I can't see any, uh, no, 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 no. Oh, right. Wait a second. What does hide actually do? Is it self visible to false? Okay. That's interesting because I've never, Hmm. Okay, let's not worry about that for now and rather get back to the handling. Let's see. Uh, the event, yes. So, if it is edit file, And we need to basically check right okay just thought of something let's see we say that it's enabled if you're able to focus the diff 
We'll have to see if that's still true when you are in the right pane. Yeah, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Uh, let's see. I'm guessing that we need the same if as up here, can focus diff, the same as this one. Oh, no, this one, basically. And then launch editor. Yeah. Okay. Let's see, we can, what we can do is log here and we just output launch editor. Great. This shouldn't return anything. Nope. Okay. Save this, jump back to the here and we're gonna run this with dash L to enable logs. Ooh. Compilation, oh yes, uh, Kiko doesn't exist. Um, keys, uh, line 51, 51. This should be an uppercase C. Yeah, looks good. Let's jump to dash I get, and we're gonna go to caches. Should be a log file here, yep. And then we are going to... Oh, hey, Stefan. Uh, let's just have a look. Uh, does the, our item show up at all? No. We did a boo-boo. Yeah, it doesn't show up here at all. So <laughs> we haven't made that work properly. Uh, let's see. I'm not really sure this is the right place to do it, to be honest. Let's see. Let's have a look at the strings. This is definitely the one, though. It doesn't look like it's used in multiple places. Wait a second. For status. Oh, we're definitely in the wrong place. Uh, what are you working on? Almost missed it again. Did you announce it somewhere? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> I did put out uh, put out a tweet, um, and I I'm, I guess you should get a notification if you uh, subscribe to me on. Uh, is it called subscriptions on Twitch? Follow me on Twitch, maybe. I think it's follow. If you follow me on Twitch, that's the one. Um, I'm currently looking into the um, uh, opening a diff in the specified editor. I, I don't have too much time to stream tonight, so I thought I'd look into something, hopefully, uh, s um, small, or rather, uh, not too, too complicated. Uh, so first order of business is actually moving this where I meant it to be. <laughs> because um, uh, this is not it. Uh, so let's see. Doo -doo -doo. Let's take... Uh, what do we need? This. Let's get all these. Get over here. Focus left, right. Focus on diff. Self to focus. Focus diff. Self is visible. So focus right. Okay, so we focus on diff. That's the right panel. Right, right, right. So this is just locally scoped. I'm guessing is the thing here. We'll put this in here. This can. Do. So can focus diff is still a thing. Okay. So I'm guessing, um, so
Yeah. Uh, let's see. This should be enabled. Okay, so if the focus is on def, it should check oh, it should check if it can focus on def. If not, it should return true. So if it's if it's in the let's see. It's in a, if it's uh, let's see if it's not in the right pane. Yeah. So if it's not if it's in the left pane, you should only be enabled if you can focus on the diff. And if it's in the right pane, it should always be true. Right. <laughs> uh, let's see. When is it available? Always. Or rather, uh, when self is visible, apparently. Yeah, so let's just do that. Uh, let's see, delete to that one. And no, it's um, visible. So when self is visible, show this, right? And also down here, uh, we put something in here. This should not be here. Uh, let's see, I'm assuming, yeah, here we go. Uh, focus left, right. Let's just paste it in over here. <clears throat> okay, so this is counting. Mm -hmm. This is doing a double check. So it's not letting you switch focus unless this still is true, even though the item that kind of launches this event uh, the item isn't available when this isn't true. So we're doing a double check. Should we continue to do that or should we just rely on the the item logic, the command logic to be correct? I am in favor of the latter, I think. 166, uh, yeah. Yeah, 66. Uh, it's 166, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly, do you want to open in editor? The old or new file? I'm not sh even sure what the ticket author expects when he wants to edit the file just a bit when watching the diffs. Okay, so the, <clears throat> uh, I, I briefly mentioned it earlier in the stream, but what I'm expect or how I'm interpreting this is when you're looking at the diffs in, uh, let's see, in here, yeah. So you're looking through the diffs maybe, uh, and I do this myself also actually. Um, I usually look through all my, uh, all the diff diff changes in my files before committing them. And if you suddenly see, ah, I should have changed uh, this thing to have another space or something, um, I will jump into the file and do a small edit just to make the file look the way I want it. And I'm, I'm assuming that's what he's referring to. You just want to make a small change to the file before committing. And instead of jumping back to your editor, you can just almost do it in line here. It's not entirely in line, but yeah, you know what I mean. So I'm, I'm assuming that's what he means. And you're, you're kind of able to do the same thing in, in uh, fork actually. So if you're looking through files, um, I thought you were able to, oh no, it's just during merging, I think. Uh, no, or is it this one? Yeah, okay, no, that's not the one. <laughs> I, I was sure I was able to, okay, I'm not. Um, so in fork, when you are uh, rebasing, you're, you're able to do this. So you can do, you when you're doing merge conflicts, you are able to, I'm not uh, showing stuff with my hands, which I'm not able to see. <laughs> uh, when when you are merging stuff and you're ha you have conflicts, you're able to edit the file in line while choosing which uh, parts of which file to include in the final result after the merge. You're also able to edit the file post merge directly inside of the UI. It's kind of hard to 
show explain by not showing it and I'm not going to spend a lot of time creating a merge conflict just to show it. At least so that's what I'm assuming he means. Um I'll just put something together and we'll see if we like it, I guess. <laughs> um uh, what was his thinking? Yeah, yeah, okay. So I'm thinking with this. We just like focus left rely on the logic to show the command item to not launch this uh, event unnecessarily. I'm just now thinking what happens if we No. No, we can't do that because if you just hit E without the No, that okay, we need to check here. Do we though? Yes, we kind of do. So if hmm either this has to be true or or um Uh, what was the check we did earlier? Diff is... Uh, no. Or was it? If self.focus is focus diff. Yeah. So either if we can focus on diff or... Oh, we don't need the parentheses here. Self dot fo focus is focus diff. Yeah. It's just that just opening the file as is on disk might not be what you currently see in the diff, depending on what changes are written to index. Okay. So not just opening the file as is on disk. Right, I think this is see what you're saying. I'm not able to explain myself, but I think I see what you're saying. <laughs> hmm. That is a problem. Hmm. <laughs> Trying to, you could have parts of the disk version stage, you know, and that may. The opposite change in work here. Okay, you could have parts of the disk version stage, and that. That makes the opposite change in work there than what shows up in the editor. Yes, what do show up in the editor? Well, that is a good question. If you only stage parts Sorry to make it more complicated. Well, <laughs> it's not you making it complicated, it's Git. <laughs> um, part 
parts of the disc were just staged and then made the opposite change in work there than what shows up in the editor. I'm assuming... Hmm, I remember back in the days when Mercurial was still a thing and I've heard it because it did not do this weird stage thing. <laughs> I've actually never used TIG. Should we maybe see what that does? Uh, let's see. Um, TIG it. <laughs> do, 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 do. I'm assuming I can just install it through Homebrew. Also, I really hope this isn't too complicated to get into. Make install. Ugh. Ah, yes, for installing an open brew. Nice. <laughs> Use it to my ears. Uh, TIG. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I assume it lets you edit the unified diff form. Updating on brew. Downloading. Portable Ruby for Yosemite, but I'm on Catalina. Dun dun dun. Probably fine. Uh, let's see. Introduction. No. Uh, manual. Pager mode. Tick show. Hmm. Do I just do views? Blah, 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 blah. Hmm. Open it and press H, that's when I... Tig is a crazy mess, one reason I started to get your eye. Open it and press H, that's when I tuned out. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see. I'm not sure. Uh, let's uh, let's just do it in a window. Can I do this? Okay, whoa. Okay. So far, so good. Unstage changes. Okay. Can I move beyond the first line? Right. 7%, it says. Oh, is that how far down the file, uh, the list I am? <laughs> okay. Oh, well now I'm grepping. No, 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 don't grep. How do I not? Okay, there we are. Uh, let's see. H. Okay. View switching, view main, diff view. Okay. Okay, this is this is this is a diff. That's that's true. They have the branch of uh, visualization going from the. I like that. Okay. Press H. Hmm. Can we do branch? Yes, yes, again. Check a branch. External commands. Hmm. Visual. Um. Oh, come on. There we go. Oh. Um. Hmm. 
Carfla, blah, 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 blah. I mentioned the E key, that's over here. Open in editor. So, I was just wondering. Oh, okay. So, if I hit E here. Ooh, it jumps to the correct line even, it looks like. Or is that just. No, it jumps straight to the right line. So, if I do here. Oh, okay, that's nice. Huh. So there might be a way to specify which line you want the editor to open at. Maybe there is maybe there is a standard way a standardized way to do this. Hmm, interesting. I know okay, let's see. Let's jump out of this. Uh, if I set visual to be, uh, let's see, code, I'll probably need these here, dash W, TIG, and I go here and run this. Okay, so code doesn't jump to the right line. So it's probably... So Vim apparently recognizes some kind of input for which line it should launch at. Oh, crap. But code does not. That's fine. So it could, in theory, make this work. Okay, that's actually quite nice. Uh, pretty sure there is for Vi. I guess there is nothing you can do. You can't do with it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't think I have. Oh, yeah. um, did I make a change? I shouldn't have. No. Okay. Uh, how do I? Okay. There you go. Oh, it seems they use Q for everything. View, view close, close ground view, quit. Huh, okay. Instead of escape. Uh, okay. I think you can pipe in the same keys you otherwise need to press to jump to a line in Vi. Oh, okay. Yeah, I kind of assumed you just did like a file name colon line number or something without having to actually uh, be my guess. Um, uh, do, 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 do. List of file names. Cursor will be positioned on the first line of the buffer. You can get to other files. The next command to edit a file that starts with a dash. Blah blah blah. Uh, for the first file, the cursor will be positioned at line num. If num is missing, the cursor will be positioned at the last line. Oh, okay. With a plus, actually. Do you do? So it looks like you just, uh, that's not what I want. Uh, I guess. So if I, not that one. Cool to see you're still going on at GitUI. Yeah, sure. Um, I want it to be, I, I really like it so far. So, and I haven't been able to start using it at work. Um, Mostly because I don't have Rust installed in uh, at my well, I say work computer, but I, I haven't 
Rust installed in, in Windows, on Windows. So I haven't been able to, to install the latest, latest from Master, but uh, as soon as 0.8 is out, um, I'm gonna try starting using it as my daily driver and see how it works out. Uh, let's see. What was I thinking? Yeah, uh, let's open a file. Um, sure, read me. And I can then do a plus, I don't know, uh, 51, 41. Ooh, okay. That's nice. So, um, hmm. Interesting. That is cool. I learned something new today. So that's actually quite interesting. That could be cool to include. But as far as I can see, uh, let's see, just close this down. It looks like this just opens this file. Well, what happens if I go here and make a small change? Um, sure, launch the editor. Uh, and write that back. What happens if I, how do I stage stuff, stage? St status update, stage, unstage, chunk, or file changes. Okay. Um, you. Ha, huh, interesting. So now it puts that in. Okay. Can I jump directly between these two? Stage and stage single line. The current diff chunk. Oh, so it's, oh, it's not the whole file. Okay, I see. So instead, yeah, but I, I wanted to, ah, whatever. But if I now make an edit again, wait, what just happened now? What? Edit. Ah, it goes to the wrong line. It's off by nine lines, I think. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Save that. Yeah, okay, so it's now it's not updated in the staged version. But if I go here. Okay, right off the bat, I really prefer Git UI's version where you can see individual files. And then jump in to see the diffs. So let's see. Yeah, okay. While I really wish we could do one better here, I really struggle to see how we could make that work reliably. So what would be, would be cool is if this was staged two. Well, do we really want that? Hmm. Uncertain. Hold on, hold on. Where are you located, Stefan? If you're at plus two. I'm at plus one, which I thought was Central European summertime. Does Germany observe something else? Anyway, that's... <laughs> that's a digression. Uh, let's see. Okay. So, in theory, if you go... In Git UI, if you go down here and do an edit, if you make a change here, it will make the change over here. Yeah, that's just a uh, default behavior by by Git, I think. Wait a second, I oh 
have I, I don't think I've built after. Oh, uh, whoops, uh, not that one. Uh, where is complain status? Oops, that's when I'm in 386. Oh, right, I'm not returning. What exactly? So the enum. So these are all returning results. And okay. Uh, and okay. No, 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 no. Uh, a pool. Okay. So false, I guess. This is where they're not. Okay, it's handled, so we should probably should return true. I'm guessing that's what it returns. Does, no, it doesn't have any documentation. Or whether it might have. Uh, that's the one I meant. Returns true event propagation needs to end. Event was consumed. Yeah. Yep. So that should be right. Uh, let's see. Ooh, uh, here we go. Now let's have a look. Here we go. Edit item. Ha ha. Great success. It's here. It's grayed out when it should be. That's great. Um, let's go over here. Still available. That is fantastic. Actually, I really would prefer, well, thankfully, the colors in here are pretty good. So red and green are really distinct. A problem for me as, um, as if, uh, when I'm colorblind, these two colors are really similar. So a lot of times I have difficulty distinguishing between them and it's really annoying. And what's even more annoying is that fork doesn't use any symbols to indicate whether anything is added. You can have a look at the line numbers and see, okay, this is the old line numbers and these are the new ones. And this is only present in the old line numbers. So that's what's been deleted. And this is only present in the, among the new line numbers. So those these are added, but there are no easy like pluses or minuses at the beginning in the gutter here to indicate whether a line was added or removed. And it's really annoying. Sometimes I'm having difficulties at seeing, is this line added or is it removed or even especially when they're kind of intermingled but where some lines are removed and some lines are added uh, all jumbled up i have problems distinguishing which ones are which and it's <sighs> it's a minor annoyance but it's it's real so but, but luckily the colors in the terminal are a lot more distinct than they are over here in, in fork, so that's good. But it would actually be quite nice to have some plus pluses or minuses, for example. Uh, and as you can see, in TIG, they actually have that, so... Uh, oops. Wait. What did I do now? How did I... How do I... Wait, wait, wait. How do I enter the lower area again? Can it scroll? Wait. But I want to... Uh, this way? No. <laughs> uh, oh, that, that's not what I want either. No, but I want to... Oh! Oh! Interesting. Huh. Uh, that's on me. Um, anyway. Yeah, this is kind of nice, where it says minus a plus to easily distinguish. Anyway. I do digress again. Uh, let's see. So I press this and go down here. There is the log. Yes. Let's look for the info launch editor. Yeah. So the event is here. Whoop. So nice. We got everything hooked up. Now it's just for launching the editor. 
<laughs> and this is the interesting part because it's done in a somewhat uh, roundabout way <laughs> because of reasons <clears throat> and external dependencies and what have you. So what we need to do first is have a look at how we did it last time. <laughs> Uh, so I'm guessing it's inside of commit at this point. Error does not implement display required by, okay. Whatever. Ooh, wait a second. Did they fix this? Uh, let's see. Ah, here we go. This is the, no, this is core result. No, oh, yeah, yeah, for MN. Ah, yes, awesome. Uh, there was an update to the Rust plugin recently for C-Lion uh, or the JetBrains IDs. And they mentioned specifically, uh, it should fix import problems where, what was it? There was something, uh, uh, something with the, it not realizing that you had imported stuff. And they specifically mentioned anyhow as an example, example, and apparently this is one of those. So finally, it recognizes the result as being imported. Uh, previously, it would mark this as red and say, oh, I can't find this type, even though it's it's actually imported over here somewhere. Here we go. Anyway, nice. That's that's been fixed. But open commit editor right here. So we put on the queue. We Suspend polling, right? So that what this does is it suspends uh, the um, the internal mechanism for for picking up on key presses from the user. Uh, so let's just steal the, <laughs> this line wholesale. Uh, where is it? So this will suspend the polling. So the reason we do this is because. Uh, when you launch the, for example, if you launch a Vim uh, from here, if you've set up Vim to be the default editor in your terminal, if you if Git UI does, does not suspend the polling, it will try to fetch the next key event uh, from the user. So when you type on your keyboard, um, it will try to pick those up and handle those events internally in Git UI and not pass them on to Vim. So we need to stop Git UI from looking into key presses at all and don't mess with them and just let them pass on to Vim. So we need, but we need to do that before we launch Vim or else Git UI will snatch up those key events and prevent them from reaching Vim, which will look to the user as if something's wrong and Vim isn't picking up their key presses. So we need to stop this polling before we launch. So that's why we first send an event to suspend the polling and then in <laughs> in app, I think. I mean, it's not as if I actually wrote this code <laughs> or anything. <laughs> uh, crap, where is it? <laughs> uh, we we get the event and. reference this <clears throat> yes this one yes so it sets polling to false which means stop polling and then it runs external editor pop-up show which is just a small pop-up shows a launching external editor Right. And that's all fine and dandy. The next problem is though, that's where we stole it from. And that's where we just put it, yeah.
So the next thing is we need to check uh, how is it, but we're doing it again. Yes, when it recognizes that key event, it does this, then it suspends the polling and the show editor. Yes, this function is called. And this function is used here instead of app. Inside of the event. Yeah, okay, now remember. So if the event was a polling state change, and if that if it, the input state is now paused, we try to show the editor. At this stage though, we need to do something different. Hmm. We need to signify in some way that we want to launch, we still want to launch the editor, but we don't want to launch it the same way we do now. What's the best way to do that though? Oof. I can think of two ways and I'm trying to figure out which one I like better. I think the way I want to do it is by Instead of instead of sending the uh, so let's see uh, so instead of sending maybe this should be. <laughs> hmm. Maybe the polling thing should just be a side effect of <laughs> there should be a flag set. Because this, this line right here expects that every time you suspend the polling, the same thing should happen, which is show the external editor pop-up. And so far, that is true. But should we make it more generic now, or should we uh, postpone it another time? Or should they, this maybe not be suspend polling, but rather sh open um, external commit editor or something? show commit editor and it's it's pulling to false it shows the external editor pop up and it runs this and then there should be another one just for i think yes i do think yes okay so we're going to do we're going to do it this way we'll rename this to show Commit editor. And it does everything as before. Then we add another event just below it. And this will be um, Open file. <laughs> Open file in editor. Hmm. 
Hmm. I guess yes. We also need to pass on which file this pertains to, so... Okay, let's just go to internal events. Open commit message input. So, actually, this should rather be open commit editor. Okay, wait a second. Uh, let's go back here. Let's remove this. Uh, yeah, okay, that's what I want. Yes, to do, make this <laughs> generic open external editor to also use it for other, in other places. Specifically 166, yeah, okay. Right, so this is exactly <laughs> what we're about to do. <clears throat> so what I think we're gonna do instead is rename this still. Call it open, boot, external editor. And it's going to contain a string. Insert identifier is not valid. Okay. Right, right. Um, we'll do this first. And then we're going to do this. Remove that. So now we're going to get a few errors. This is going to be, well, hmm. Instead of a string, maybe it should actually just be a path. That makes more sense. It's, I mean, it's actually a proper thing here. So this is a path. And... This could, well, actually, let's make this an option <laughs> of path, like so. And it says polling to false. It shows the external editor thing. It in, does that thing. And after that, it also sets self. So set of here. Yeah, I'm gonna um, pile to open, and that's a path. Port that. You know what, this is still gonna be a option of path. And right here, we're going to add file to open being none. That's gonna be path. Like so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then inside of commit, uh, open external editor. It's going to push with a none. So the th thinking here is if you ask it to open the editor with a none, it assumes that it's supposed to open the commit message thing. And if it's not none, it should open a different file, basically. So isn't this used somewhere else in? Yeah, 
Yeah, because it sets it. Ah, uh, this is a set of status. Yeah, so in this case, in status, it should say um, that we need some kind of path. That makes it quiet for now. I uh, was it F twelve? Yeah. And then in set of commit, it picks up when input state. I think. Is it not instead of commit? Somewhere else. No, uh, let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. It will. Is it instead of app, maybe? Here we go. So, yes, it should show editor. So if it is paused, right, we should most likely launch an editor. Hmm. Well, hmm. Yeah, we're going to leave it for this now. And we'll probably expand this later. When the problem is, when the polling stops now, we always assume that we're going to launch the editor, which is so far the case. But we probably have to differentiate with that between, little, between that later. But we'll do that when we get to it, I think. That's gonna introduce a whole lot of new set of enums, and I'm I'm not gonna do that now before I actually know what the other enums are supposed to be. So yeah, let's not do that yet. So this is gonna check if the input state is paused, uh, then we are going to have a check. Because If some path is self dot file to open, do one thing. Uh, let's not put that on a different line. If not, do this as before. Uh, actually, do this. Set that back to true, set polling to true again. Yeah. Cannot move self. Uh, why does it think we need to move? Just having a look at the variable. Actually, we are going to take this. 
Yes. So what this does is, for an option, uh, if this is uh, a uh, if this is a none, this will return a none, and that's okay. But if it's a sum, if there is a value here, it will return that sum, and it will replace that sum with a none. So it, we basically consume the the uh, the option that was there. So that will actually do exactly what we want. <clears throat> Righto. So at this point, we actually want to do a lot of the same stuff that we do inside of show editor. So what I'm actually going to do is use a temp file here. Sure, that makes sense. Yeah, because I use a specific file name here. I reuse the same file over and over. That's maybe not the best idea. Yeah, fair enough. So we need to get the right editor. So this should probably be unified somewhere. Push string, and this is the config, and yeah, that's the file path. So what I'm wondering is, should I maybe just put everything, all of this editor logic, all the way from which editor should I choose to input this file, to get the different parts of the command to uh, to I'm not able to launch it to not this <laughs> um, yes yeah, so it launches back to, into it okay that's nice uh, so running the command to everything, I guess. Should it, should it be a general way to launch external commands or should it just be an editor command that one, I'm wondering? Because this could be any no, because I want logic with the with the um, all this logic to work too. Now we're gonna we're gonna move this. So where do I move it? My first instinct is just to move it to main, the global function basically. Do we have any present for this? I think so. Set up terminal, draw, because I think config path, for example, is uh, specified at the top level. Yeah. So I think I'm just going to continue doing that. Set panic handlers. Process command line. Set up logging. Get that config path. Start terminal. These are here. Um, open file in editor. Editor. Uh, we're going to pass in a. Okay, we're going to pass in a path, which is a path buff, like so. We're going to return a result. Of uh, what's the return of status? I wonder. Uh, do status is uh, that's not the shortcut. An exit status. 
Mm. Meh. <laughs> Just gonna do unit. So next part is I'm getting most of this. So we're gonna yank everything out here. Place that in. We're still gonna do that. And then we are going to get these four lines. Put them about here. Do that. Import this. This all looks fine. And we're gonna go back here. We're going to go create uh, open file in editor. And where we did config path. which is the type of path buff. Should we just do like a, no, we'll just blow it. We don't need an actual. Okay, so we, oh, this is even typed wrong. Oh no, <laughs> uh, these should be changed. Stringly typed, visual editor. By okay. This should just be path. Mm hmm. What's this complaining about? Uh, function returns void instead of result. It says so. We need to do an OK and a void. If anything goes wrong, we should return the right thing. OK. So we open file and editor over here in commit. And then we do the same in app, where if this. We do um, create, open file and editor, and we'll just be able to borrow the path like so. And that should be fine. That will return a result, so we do that. And that should be good. Well, not exactly. We should probably not return an error, apparently. Ugh. Okay, let's do this instead. If let... Wait a second. Let. If let... Oh, error. Uh, error. E. I guess. Launch editor, blah, 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 blah. Hmm. These look very similar. <laughs> uh, maybe, yeah, we're gonna rewrite this. Okay, so let's go all the way back here, I think. Uh, let's redo this. This is complaining because explain the path buff, but it found a path. Okay, so we can do this, I think, as no. Two path buff. Converts a path to an own path buff. That's nice. Um, hey, 
I really should just not borrow it. But we're not, the thing is, we don't really consume it either. So I don't want to do that. Can we just do this? Is that fine? I think it is. Sure it is. Okay. So let's change this to actually assign something. So let's call this result. Uh, lack of anything better to call it. And we'll either do this or we will do this. No, <laughs> this, uh, like so. And then we'll get these five lines moved out here. And we say that if if result is an error, show this error message. If not, do not do that. If let's me to match. Sure, that's more, that's probably better. Do we really need these curlies though? There we go, that's better. Yeah, show an error if there is one to show. Yeah. <laughs> sure, cargo from it. That's fine. Uh, let's try to compile this and see how we're doing. We have some errors. <clears throat> let's start with the first one. We are importing it anyhow, but we're not using it in commit. Let's just fix it at once. Not gonna drive me crazy. Let's see. There we go. Uh, we're also use importing env, but we're not using it. Let's remove that. Uh, we're using command, but we're not using importing command, but not using it. And then we get to the meat in app at line 52. We the size for values of type you cannot be known at compilation time. Borrow the path instead. Right. Mm. We could just put it in a box. Does it just suggest anything? Required by this bound. Within path, the trait size is not implemented. To learn more, not required because blah, blah, blah. It suggests borrowing the path, and I don't think I want to do that. Because that creates all sorts of problems. Because then we start, we have to start thinking about lifetimes and I kind of didn't want to do that. So I kind of just want to put it in a box instead. I'm going to put it in a box, I think. Box of path. Now it's complaining because nothing, just a bit slow. This is Can I can I do this path? Uh no. Yeah, but the thing is this is not a, a path anymore, this is supposed to be a box of path. Like so. Now this works again. Yeah, okay. 
Uh, yes, now it works as it should. All right, uh, that's going to create some problems in commit. So let's find those, not that one. Uh, okay. Uh, open external editor. Yeah, this process is done, so that's not a problem. Uh, let's see in status. Yes, yeah, so this returns a box new like so. Is that not the problem? Why does it think it's a burrowed path? Is that what that returns? Oh, it is. Oh, I probably need from. Yes. But then this isn't good enough. <laughs> uh, what do you expect? A T, right? Okay. Performs a conversion. How nice. Is this not valid? Yes? No. Oh, oh, it probably needs to be... Oh, man. String from... Is this the one? Think, 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 think. No. Pick the path. Oh, okay. It depends from... from... What is it then? Oh, oh, I'm mixing them. Oh, I'm mixing them. That's the problem. That's the problem, right? I actually want the path buff. That's the thing. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this should be a path buff. And inside of app, I think. Yeah, so this should also be a path buff. There we go. Okay, 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 okay. That makes a lot more sense. Uh, let's see, previous occurrence. Yeah, let's just remove path. Um, and that can probably convert directly from that. And let's just import that and let's don't import that. Uh, commit does none, so that's fine. App. Uh, polling. So this will actually wants a path. No, I, no, I want this to be a path. That's how I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why did it not put it inside with the... Here. file and editor, this one's a path. I have a path, um, and that's a box. Did 
through Papov. I basically just want to borrow the path. Is it able to do that seamlessly? I think so. It's a smart pointer. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now it's now it's what I want it to be. So let's try running it again. <laughs> Getting more errors, um, along with some warnings. What's the warning? And used important queue. Okay, let's just fix that. Oh, didn't port this. Which is the first error, All right? And we'll just do this. That's the first two. And then let's see the next error is in commit. Enable to infer the type parameter. <clears throat> and commit, right? Oh, that's not what we want. Commit. So it's not like this, right? Yeah. Can it infer to type for the parameter t? It's a bit weird though, because it's very explicitly, it says here, it's an option of a box of path buff. But I'm wondering if this has to do with the status one? That can't be. That seems to. Uh, line 390. Right, right. Um, uh, let's see, from maybe? Yeah, that is a string. All right, uh, does it take a string slice? Yes. Could not compile. So in commit. What was it claim, complaining about? Uh, the result is unused. Uh, so 165. We could do this, I think, I guess. There we go. Now it should compile fine. Yay, success. Uh, right. And if we do this, yeah, it, it should open the file, but this is, uh, so far, that's the, uh, as far as we got. So if we go back to status, yes. Now we need to figure out which file we're at. And how do we figure that out? So it looks like it, it keeps track of what is in focus. So it switches focus here. Okay, right below here, move down, move up. It checks whether or not index WD. If it moves down, it checks if, if focus is work there and index is not empty what is index changes component if it's in stage An index of working tree is not empty. Right, 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 right. So index uh, is the staged area. Mm. 
And if it's not empty, it moves down right. Okay. But if it reaches this point, the it feels to me that there should be another handler for move down because this only triggers if focus is a work there, there and the next area is an, uh, an index is not empty. It switches focus. Focus stage, what's that? Um, right, it just is an S. Right. But that still doesn't explain. Okay, so I'm assuming that diff is a component, yes. It tells you if it's focused, I guess, and it has a current. And current has a path, a stage, and hash. Okay. And I am going to assume that if I open index, Index, no. Whew. A stage. Nope. Please just index the RS. Wow, that's a lot of things that we didn't want. Uh, let's see. Where is status? Here we go. Oh, it's probably, uh, it's probably just called s stage? No. It's called work there though? No. But we can have a look at this index. Changes component. Because the, both of those are just changes component. Right, right. Title. Files is working there. Q, branch name. The file tree component has status tree, a selection, which is a use size, which I'm guessing is the index of the file tree items. Which, <laughs> okay, right. But um, uh, let's see. In this diff component, at some point, you need to tell it which one is the current one. This is the one, I think. No, this gets the current for you. Right. Uh, clear, update. Ah, uh, yes, this is the one. Self diff update. This up called when any tree component changed selection. Update diff. Self is visible if let some IDs have commit. Self.details.file selection file. Self is inspect commit. Details component.
There's the start of it in diff. And the update. Oh, this is more like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. 263 and 271 in both update diff. Showing the diff on the right of the right file. Maybe the diff changed. We don't show the right diff right now. So we need to request. Okay, so this uses another function called if called diff. Yeah, but this actually explains the uh, or uh, gives us the answer, I think, which is self select path. This stuff does everything I need, I think. Returns a string and a bool, which tells us if it's staged or not. Okay, so we don't actually care about that, but it's useful to know that that's something we can get. Let's see. So if it's sum and we unwrap the inner, because this returns a, a tuple, a string and bool. So it's a sum with a path and a, okay. So that's inside status. So I think, oh right, um, yes, but we can do this fairly easily. No, we are instead of status, and we need to put an external editor here. Right here, actually, yeah. So we can do self.current, no. what was it? <laughs> Self-selected path. Self diff current. So already showing the diff. Right, we check. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I see. So we actually we want this. Select the path. Not do this, but um, put an external. Select the path, which returns a string and a bool. And hmm. If we don't receive what we want, what do we do then? Do we just do nothing? I think so. Yeah. So if let sum, this is, this is um, uh, a string, which is the path and something we don't care about. This goes here. Well, that could be quite easy. Okay, let's see if that works. So, let's see. We want to, I don't know, edit something in here. That actually worked. Oh, this is really nice. <laughs> it's so fun when things actually work. <laughs> okay, let's go over here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we can't do anything here. Or here. Uh, or here. Or here. But if we go here and we say launching editor. So now, now we're bumping up 
uh, against something that uh, Stefan mentioned in chat, which is right now there are two versions of status, right? There is the one that's changed. Uh, the, the stage changes, which is what Git will actually commit. So in this case, it will be this launch Z editor. But if we go over here into the unstaged changes, we'll see that there's another version of this where it doesn't do the log info thing, but where it actually does the thing that's supposed to do. So the question is then, what do you do here? If you launch the editor from here, you are not launching into the this state of the file, right? You're launching into the state of the file that's this, basically. So what we could do is you're not allowed to edit the file once it's staged. You have to unstage it, edit it, and then stage it again. But I feel that's rather counterintuitive. I mean, that just seems like a, a whole lot of extra work for n no good reason, basically. So what I would rather want to do is do what TIG does actually, which is if you have staged changes that are different from the unstaged one, ones, uh, just launch into whatever is the most recent on disk. And I think that's, I think that's more, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? More uh, aligned with what you would see if you went back to your proper editor and edited the file, right? So while you might not get the mo the correct version of things in the staged in the staged area, if you go back to your actual editor and tries to try to update the file, you have this is this is what you would see anyways. Whatever is an unstaged at this point. Right. So doing that um, keeps, how should I put it? Uh, it's uh, it's loyal to, to how it would feel if you, if you went to your, in quotes, proper editor, I think. Yeah. So we're going to do that. So if I launch this, I can go to wherever that was. Um, it's in the uh, edit file section thing. Yeah, whatever. Happy, I go back. I need to may may need to restage some things, but that's that's just how Git works. What would be interesting though is if we could include the line number that we're looking at, but I'm not really sure how to do that though. Uh, we do have access to, I didn't like that that wasn't a separate line. We do have access to the diff. So self.diff dot current. It's a string and a bool. Okay, that's not how very helpful. Hmm, focused, no. That's just a bool if it the component itself is focused. Okay. It would be cool if we were able to get the line number of the current when we're in the diff. Maybe. Ah, huh, selected hunk. Set hunk, stage hunk, unstage hunk, add line. Let's 
what's this inside? Get text. Uh, group selection. Okay, so there's no way to get the hunk itself, but it seems. It's an option of view size, so it's apparently. Hmm. Saturating ad. Hmm. Current size, get text. Hunks. If it's empty, do this thing. Else selection. Okay, so it looks like we're we could be able to get the current hunk and the Ugh, but still though it's a hassle to get the current the correct line I'm thinking. Uh once you uh go into the hunk thing you scroll with up and down arrows. Uh, I don't know, up, no, okay, down, move down, move selection, okay, let's see what that does, it gets the diff from self, which is a file diff, okay, right, This seems to be mainly concerned with yeah, self-selection. Okay, so that's the current line we're at. Okay. So it's not really concerned about what's... So if there is a file def... This diff that they're referring to is the file diff, right? So if I do is find selected hunk with the diff and the selection, I get 
just to use the right um, I kind of want to <laughs> let's see what does this actually do Zero U size. Okay, so it starts from the top and then works its way through all the hunks. Ugh, there's no easy way to kind of get which line. Hmm. I would have to go through each of the hunks, find the lengths, subtract that from the current selection. When I finally hit the, the correct hunk, I can then I can then get the line inside of the hunk. Oh, man, we really should be able to do this because this is such a nice quality of life improvement to the whole thing. If you're on a line, we jump straight to that line. That is chef's kiss. Mwah. Okay, let's see. I'm just wondering if I should do this tonight or if I'm gonna just gonna end it here and do it some other night. But I kind of wanted to get this done tonight. It would be so nice to be able to just finish this off. Mm. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to do it now. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, for the commands. Edit item. If the focus is in... the focus is not on diff and and this basically. It's not a diff and it can focus. It should be enabled. And only if th this is visible and uh, there's another focus on diff. Right. That makes sense, yeah. So down here in the event handling, uh, we should check uh, edit file. 
if we can focus on diff uh, let's see we're just going to delete all this if self can focus on diff change this to be very explicit and oh that it should not be focused on diff yes and uh, we're going to change this to be an, an option of a tuple so it contains a box and a u size like so Mean this will not work because it needs a zero here. I think. Uh, nope. It needs a zero. Uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, zero parentheses. Is that all right? E yes, it is. Inside of the sum. Yeah. And now it's complaining because. Expected, found, okay. It's an option. Right, it's an option of, right. These two. Is that not right? Uh, let's see. This is the closing bracket of the box. This should be the close. No, that's from the path. Okay, right. So this, there we go. <laughs> that's some, um, that's a lot of parentheses. Uh, what's the complaining about here? <clears throat> This should go. Yeah, there we go. So now instead of app, instead of File to open should also be changed. There should also be a tuple like this, which also needs us to change to this. Can this still be a none? Yep. And we look at the next occurrence of this. This is now a tuple like so. So this is a path and a line, bottom line, I guess. And this should take line like so. I need to jump here. A line, just the U size. Could be an option, maybe. Yeah, I think so. Option of view size.
Oh, it can probably just be you size. <clears throat> so after we get the editor, we push the thing here, right? And then we do this again. And we specify that uh, duh, 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 duh. if line is not zero, we should put in the string. <laughs> right. Okay, this becomes. You know what, I'm actually gonna move, I'm gonna move this one level up. So if line is not zero, we're gonna do a thing. Else, we're gonna do what we did before. We do then, let's just move this up here. We add a plus, a plus like so. One of these, we get this in here, and we put in a uh, line, like so. So that works. Uh, let's just see. Yeah, all that works. Okay, so for diff, we need to find commands. see we wanted to move after remove hunk basically so I think first to scroll then it's this one but it's hidden. Yeah, I think I'm going to put it here. So this should be a copy of what we had in status. Uh, so let's go to commands in here. And we'll do the uh, edit item one. So we'll just do if the hunk is select uh, self dot selected hunk is oops uh, selected hunk is sum and if it's available if it's focused and that's probably it yeah so self is focused self focused right this should show up here uh, now we just need to handle the event which is done in event right here. I'm not really sure. Move down up to <clears throat> reset. Uh, I think we're just going to move in here. So we're actually just going to steal again from copy and go to event. edit file that's the one and we're gonna steal oh, 16 lines of code from here paste them in here uh, and this is it's basically the same as before where we don't want to all right, so this one, this one is easy. Um, 
this is uh, uh, this is the one if it's focused isn't that the one we check here yeah and the other one is uh, select hunk is sum we also need to check that so self uh, selected hunk is sum and now we're getting to the interesting part so first we need to get the diff so we get that by doing self diff uh, so let's change this to be diff that's going to be self to diff, like so. We're just going to borrow that. So now we have access to the diff. <coughs> I guess we'll like get back to that one. But now we need to find the correct line inside of that thing. So we have self.selection. And we have, okay. Hmm. We just know the overall selection, not which line inside of the current hunk is selected. So for self dot hunks. <clears throat> Get hunk. Get. <coughs> Selected? No. Current? No. Which is it? Uh, move selection. Yeah, that's the one. Let's see. So we're basically going to do what this does, which is goes through the diff that hunks, iters, and enumerates. Okay, so we're just going to copy this for now. This is not what we want. This is what we want. So we're going to get the length. And uh, let's see if hunklen is <clears throat> is less than self selection. Remember correctly, this does <clears throat> sets the line cursor to zero immediately. And for every time it skips a hunk, it appends the hunk len. So, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to say. <coughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to set current 
line to be self.selection. Then I'm going to check if the length of the current hunk is less than current line. And if it is so, set current line to be uh, minus equals hunk len and continue. If that is not the case, which means that the current selection is inside of this hunk, then I should get the hunk dot lines and I should get the current line of that which returns me a line, I think, some kind. It's a diff line. And does diff line have a, does have a line type, I guess? Uh, let's see, add else branch, convert if let to match. <clears throat> match for line dot line type, I guess. Uh, fill match arms. <clears throat> None header add or delete. Okay. Not exactly what I wanted to know. And the content is just a string. Okay, so I don't actually get the line number of the <laughs> this file diff, what type? Hmm. I sold some of the four ranks, okay. Yeah, so it doesn't look like it actually shows you the line numbers. Yeah, should have checked that before I started this. <laughs> but okay, that's not too bad. It's um, let's actually do this. Let's have a look in diff. Uh, yeah, we're not gonna do that inside of diff anymore. <clears throat> yeah, we're going to have to go into status and then do some things. Now I'm too far back, I think. Yeah, that's the current. Okay, yep, yep. Let's see. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, it's just the... Uh... <coughs> <coughs> 
types over here that's being borked up. <clears throat> there we go. And this should also be changed back. <clears throat> Let's see if we missed anything. Oh, this looks good. Excellent. Yeah, this all looks good. Just as it should. Uh, so let's just have a look through all this, I think. Yeah, okay. So that's it, I, I think. Um, we got everything up and running. Um, I'm just going to put put together a uh, PR for this. Maybe I should actually just show you how to do that for once. I usually just end the stream there. And do the PR on my own time, but I think I might actually just do it on stream this time. So what I usually do is look through all the files and see if everything looks okay um, to what I want them to look like. Let's see. Yeah, that changes to result and the DST. Yep. <clears throat> that changes and that sets that one. Yep, that's fine. Moving on to commit, uh, it's now just a result. Now it does something, yep, different, which is this. Yep, yep. And then inside of here, it changes all of this to just use the single line down here. Yep, that looks right. Yep, adds that one. Does a command instead of here now. This is all just copy code and that looks right. Okay, instead of the queue, we remove that and change it. Yep. We mm-hmm. Yeah, that looks right. And then last but not least, the status. <clears throat> if we add all this all together. It should be better. not fucking focus on death. Just check if we can do that. Edit file, can focus death. Nope, oh, this also looks good. I am happy with this. Okay, uh, the final thing I should check is if we do this. Ha, huh, that's interesting. I'm just gonna make a note of this. If you unstage or stage everything, you should basically switch uh, switch active area 
because there's nothing to do in the active area if you, after you've done moved everything from or to it. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to no make a note of it in my book, my physical book, actually. Uh, move focus. We can do something about it another day. There we go. <coughs> oh, getting a dry throat and I didn't bring anything to drink. Rookie mistake, I would say. Uh, what I want to check, though, is that if I launch the commit thingy from here and I try to launch the editor, it should work fine. And it does. Okay. So, uh, what should we call this? Add. Uh, add uh, to edit. Select file in editor. Pressing E while looking. Add a file in the status view. Let's just call it, do this in like a fancy thing. The status view. Add a file in the status view. We'll launch the default. Editor as eh, specified by the. Um, okay, let's try it again. Pressing E while looking at a file in the status view will launch an external editor. External editor with the current file opened. The editor chosen is determined by the default logic introduced in, introduced in, and let's actually make a reference to, oops, uh, let's see, I think this 114. Yes, this is the one I'm thinking of. Uh, let's see this one in hash 114. Uh, let's see. Do we need to add anything else to this? Um, an improvement to this in the future would be um, could be launching at the specific line at which the diff view is. Uh, let's actually do the same here. Uh, diff is focused but that seems to require a change in file diff which is more than uh, is it which is bigger than this PR Uh, 
uh, which is a change bigger than this PR. Yeah, I think I'm happy about that. Yeah, let's leave it like that. Uh, let's just save that. Commit. And that's it. So the next thing to do now is jump over here. Let's just see that oh, this all worked out. Yeah, it did. Oh, man, this is so nice. Oh, we forgot to actually include which... Man. Uh, oh, we can do this also in here if we do... Uh, hmm. Oh, what did I do now? Oh, right, I know what I did. Um, this one? Yeah, okay. So, can I... No. Hmm. <laughs> I can't amend the previous message like I can here. Right, okay. Oh. Uh, fix this. Uh, 166. Isn't that the right one? Uh, this one. Yes. There we go. Let's push this. Uh, and it does seem that it pushes it to the wrong thing. Oh, right. Um, <laughs> that's a mistake. Uh, let's see. Let's make a new branch. That's not how you make a branch, apparently. Uh, is this how you make a branch? Yes. Uh, let's just do... Six. Um, open file in editor. External editor. There we go. And let's push that instead. Should be included like this, you think? Ah, whatever. There we go. That's the right one. And let's just reset master to where it was. Let's do a hard one, uh, which is this button. There we go. And if we go over here, I did just open a merge set into master. And the nice thing is if you only have a single commit and you actually embellish the commit message, it will fill that in automatically for you. So the first line will be, which is the title of the commit, will be in the title of the issue or pull request. And the body of the commit, which is everything after that, will be in the body of the PR. So you, that's why I usually do like these elaborate um, messages <clears throat> in my commit messages, because basically they're really practical. <laughs> um, whereas um, where they fill it, fill it out like this and also I usually, I can just do a great pull request. Uh, did I do everything I wanted to do? Because I basically want to run like make check, which does the, uh, the built-in linting and everything with the cargo, cargo clippy with the right parameters and everything. Uh, right. Um, and usually if you have a look at any commit I do, um, even like this one, it does have like a, a detailed explanation of what it actually, this commit actually does. So this adds more fix from that. This is what it actually does. So this is just like a short thing that you can read here. But if you look at the details of the commit, you can actually see what it, what it actually does in, in, in a, um, as a short description or, a, or a, um, an overview of what it does instead of having to go through all these files. <clears throat> it's not too terribly uh, too detailed. So, it, for example, this doesn't mention that I moved the implementation of how to select the editor. I didn't. I didn't mention that I moved that, but I could have done. Uh, in, in some cases, I might have. But yeah, this is such a small commit that it didn't bother. But with a large commit where I changed a lot more files, I would probably mention it to be uh, so whenever. Uh, the reviewer looks through it. If I've changed like 10, 20 files where I basically moved one thing from one place to another and changed a lot of files because of it, 
I would probably just mention it here so they didn't have to figure out why are all these lines removed and and then suddenly discovering that a lot later that oh it's because it just centralized this one function or something okay so it looks like the check went through uh i can't remember are there any others that are interesting to run before So if I run the check one, it does the femt and the clippy one. So that should probably be good enough. I could do the pedantic, but I don't think it does in the tests. Don't remember. But it didn't show any errors. Just finished. Woo! So that's good. So that means it's probably going to go through all the tests or the checks that are here. So rest femt didn't change. Didn't uh change log test don't know what that does but sure also did it um let's do whoop. let's do this just gonna check the help thing and under the changes It doesn't list it here. Ooh, that's interesting. It doesn't say edit item anywhere in here, does it? No. <laughs> all commands it says at the top, but this is not all the commands. Okay, I thought it would just show up here automatically but it does not so let's fix that before we call it a day let's see help how do you generate this list of things Sith commands. Should probably just have a look at what, where this is used. In one place, update commands. Where is update commands used? A few different places. Hmm, is it? No, but it should be included though. Where do we, keys I think, is where you add the, no, no, uh, Q, no. Strings, that's the one. Commit open editor. No, um, where is the one that I? Oh, right. Wow. That's... Whew. Yeah, this is just silly. Okay, let's try try that again on the correct branch this time. So if we have a look now, it should say... 
the changes, edit item. There we go. Okay, that's good. Wow, that's... Um, let's run uh, this again, too. Against the current branch. Aha! Here we go. <laughs> I was impressed that there were no errors. Uh, of course there wasn't, but... Um, there, of course there was errors, but... Uh, yeah. So, in status... Uh, line 318. Uh, unnecessary boolean not operation. Uh, because it is pedantic. Okay, remove the... And swap the if-else. Yeah, okay. Sure. Uh, let's do that then. Uh, was it anything else? No, that's the only thing. Okay, that's surprisingly... Huh, that was surprisingly easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here. We're going to amend. We're going to add this. Boop, boop. Like so. Amend less commit. Then we're going to do a bit of a dirty trick. Uh, let's see this. And we're going to do force push. That's going to make it all nice and dandy. So that's going to make this... Uh, where to go? First thumbs, I think? Oh, it doesn't look like it's running the clippy thing. In the checks actually. No. No, it's not. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Uh... Sure, okay. Anyway, um, at least I know that it's done right. So, yeah. Anyway, that's the end of the stream. Have a good night, friends. Bye.